All right. Let's get some stuff going on here. Double check some stuff. Big Bang Gabe, what's up? Um, gotta gotta check something. Oh man, everybody jumping in. Oh, I can hear myself. Yes. Hello, hello, people. Uh, Jay, oh now, Matt. What you doing, Universal? What's up, Doug? Liz? Secondhand? Chris? What's up, Graham? Let me pull this little chat thingy over here. Maybe that'll make me where I'm quit looking over here. It's been a hot minute. What's up, Martha? El Vampiro, what's up? Dragons, Brandon, just let everybody roll in. I I literally uh, T T H is in the house. Uh, I literally have no agenda at all. <laughs> um, my wife is really happy that I'm up here. So <laughs> she was really excited when I said I was gonna kick off the stream again tonight, and she's like, "Yes!" And I was like, "There we go." Uh, yeah. Blue Sniffer, what's up? Yeah, so if you, we'll let a few more people hop in and we'll see uh, how it goes. If you follow me on Instagram, you will uh, see what I've been working on. Watch the show. Honestly, yeah, that's, you're probably right. Yeah. Now she's been she's been really good over the last few weeks and she she asked me like every she's been asking like every Tuesday night if I was gonna do the stream. So she's she's pro me doing this big time. What's up, Graham? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So yeah, apologies up front. Like I said, there's no agenda. Um not for sure if we'll go a whole hour tonight. Um but it's, you know, I'm squirreling like crazy. I'm looking over here like, what's that? <laughs> ah, it's cracked over a Bud Light. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been missing it too. Uh, you know, I have, it's not like I haven't been missing it. Uh, I do have, wait a minute, you know what? Let me, let me pull a dude over here. He can, he can chill out right here. Yeah, there you go, dude. Yeah, that's Simon. Uh, been playing with the frogs. Somebody, uh, who was it? Hang on a minute. Somebody messaged me. Who was it? Oh, that's a chat I had with Chris in Japan. Uh, let me look here. Let me see if I can find it. Let's see if I can find it. I hate it whenever I have like messages and I don't know where they, where did they come from? Oh, you know what was it? Dang it. I thought it was there, but it's not. Anyway, somebody was telling me about the, um, the, um, punk frogs evidently are at a target in my area. Uh, thanks, Jeanette. So that's what made me think about it when Chris put in there playing with the frogs. Christina. I'm going to try my best, Odile. Pop boxes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's Simon. Uh, he works for Greg Cook Photography. He uh, he does a lot of uh, 
portraits and stuff, you know, a lot of stormtrooper stuff, you know, but yeah, that's Simon. He's a cannon guy. Uh, what's up, Vance? What do we got in here? Oh, we're cooking right along. Sleepy collectibles. Yep, yep. Um, day by day, getting better. You know, day by day, one day at a time. Yeah, he does all the close up. Yep, that's it. Right, you gotta have. I mean, come on, you know he's he he's he's a fan of the wars, you know. You know, got his Anirondack chair. He just chills, sits here, and stares at me. <laughs> uh, but hopefully, everybody's doing well tonight. Uh, actually, um, I watched the Venom uh, two trailer today. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I really didn't know uh, how to take it. If you haven't watched it yet, you need to because the whole cooking scene just had me dying. I was laughing. That was just funny as I'll get out. Oh, nice. Honestly, and I'm and you know, please forgive me. I had no idea when like punk frogs. Like I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Trading snakes for frogs. Hey, that's yeah, yeah. Hey, you know that's that's the beauty of it. Having some trade, uh, having trading as an option. It was. It's a good trailer. I mean, it was just. Um, I wasn't. It, I wasn't expecting. It, you know, and it, it's. I, I can't wait. Yeah. And the scene in the store, oh, oh God, that was even like hilarious, you know. <laughs> I liked, I liked the movie, uh, and you know, I know that the um, this one's going to be in theaters only. So I'm not going to lie, I sort of like uh, having the old HBO Max, you know, be able to go to the theater or. But it's it's I think there's gonna be a really good comedic effect in this one. Um but yeah, it's I I'm I'm gonna dig it. I think it's gonna be definitely worth uh checking out for sure. Let's see here. Of course I'm a I'm a big Tom Hardy fan anyway, so yeah, you know, what can I say? You know, and you know the crazy part is, you know, the fact that Woody Harrelson's gonna be in it. I think that's gonna be really cool. Can't eat Mrs. Chad. <laughs> that, wait, what? <laughs> right. All right. So the main topic that I actually did have, I'm going to see six more people join in. Six more people join in. I'll let you guys, you know, check something out. But I'm, I, I like Woody Harrelson. I've always liked Woody Harrelson. Even back when he was on Cheers. Um, Zombie Land, you know, but I'm, I'm, cur I'm, I'm really curious to see how his character does in the movie. Okay, two more people. No way, Brandon, I love Lawless. That was such, if you've not seen Lawless, that is a great movie. That's, wow, that's, that's pretty cool, Brandon. Oh, oh, Jay. Oh, man. MBK? Yeah, that was, that was a, that was a movie there. Uh, I have the, the Revan, I have two Revans. So I've got the two Revans. Yeah. 
I, Graham, man, I, I, yeah, I sent you a, a message on that. That thing is sick, dude. You did a great job on that. Graham's doing some 3D printing. He did a, a, a Vincent robot. Man, that thing is amazing. What's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? That 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 is cool, Brandon. That is cool. So everybody in here needs to watch Lawless just because I mean this is Brandon's history here. Uh no, I've not seen anything. I thought, you know, I've not I need to go hunt a Walgreens. I've not been at a Walgreens in a hot minute. It's been weeks. And to be honest with you, it's just because I haven't seen anything popping up at uh my Walgreens, but I need to, I need to, I need to do a Walgreens hunt. Maybe that's what I'll do this, this coming week. Just do a, like a four or five Walgreens just to see if something's out there. I've not, I've not seen the, uh, that two pack. No, I'm not. Come on, three more people and I'll show you what's right here. Uh, what's up, Brian? Good point, Buzz man. What's up, Cobra? Fifty people. Yes. All right, here we go. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen it. But the Wrecker helmet has been printed and assembled right there. The Wrecker helmet right there. This thing is awesome. Uh, there's a very good possibility that I actually will print all of the Bad Batch helmets. Uh, haven't completely decided yet, but uh, this Wrecker's my favorite character. I mean, he just is, but yeah, the Wrecker helmet. And the beard. We got the beard. <laughs> Modeling helmets. That's what we're doing. <laughs> so, yeah, that's... Uh, that was a week out of my life right there. That was a, a week of printing. I uh, sort of kept this one uh, on the down low. Didn't post uh, anything on social media because to be honest with you, this is my first helmet that I've actually printed and resized uh, the file, everything. And I truthfully didn't know how it was going to come out. Uh, but it came out good. I'm... I'm really excited. Uh, this was actually printed in three pieces. Uh, I could have actually print, printed the helmet in one piece, but I decided to go three pieces uh, to save filament and a little bit of time. And to be honest with you, I wasn't 100% convinced that I could print it as one. So I figured if I'm going to fail, I'd rather fail on a, a part of it than on the whole thing. So, um, next toy on a record helmet, but yeah, it, it did. It turned out good. Uh, give you a little bit of breakdown. So the dome. So what I did was I took the file and I went into mix mix mesh mixer and I sliced it. So I actually sliced the helmet, uh, right here on this seam line right here. So I actually have to put in some filler, uh, to hide that seam line. That was the dome. Then I took the lower half and I split it right here along this edge. I think, hang on a minute. Yeah, yeah, right there. So I cut it right there. And then I printed the back piece from here over and then the face piece finished up uh, yesterday. Then I glued it all together. And voila. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. Black Knight, yeah. 
What's funny is here's a cool thing. And I actually discovered this when I was printing it. Uh, if I do through the dome in the back and not the face plate, it actually makes a pretty cool helmet as well. So, uh, but yeah, now the, the fun part, I've got to go in. I got a little bit of cleanup to do. I need to put some uh, filler right in here to uh, hide these lines. And I've got this line right here that I've got to see out. This is this line right here is actually part of the helmet. So I can't feel that. But yeah, you can see the, the print circles and then that, that line right there. So I need to uh, sand that line down, but uh, not a, to be honest with you, not a lot. There's not a tremendous amount of, uh, of cleanup I've got to do. It's actually a really good clean print. Uh, again, just to hide the seams, nothing major. Probably a couple, two or three coats of uh, filler primer will hide most of it. And then uh, we'll start the, the painting of this bad boy. Uh, I get I get my files from Galactic Armory. Hang on a minute, I'll throw a link in there. Uh, he actually sells uh, finished uh, printed helmets as well. Uh, hang on, I'll give you a link. Galacticarmory.net. Actually, he's running a 20% off on all the Bad Batch helmets. There you go, right there. Uh, the files are the files are very reasonable. Um, just as a, an example, let me look here. Um, the you can buy all all of the helmet files for like thirty six bucks. This helmet file was eighteen bucks, so it's actually cheaper if you buy them all. But to be honest with you, I didn't know if I wanted them all, but I knew I wanted this one. Um, but yeah, you can get you can get Tech, um, Echo, Hunter. The only one that's not in there is uh, I don't think Crosshair is in there. But if you don't have a printer and you want say this helmet, you can buy the helmet already printed for ninety bucks. And honestly, that's not terrible. That's what I paid for my uh, my Heavy Mandalorian helmet uh, was ninety bucks. So I mean. Let's think about it. I mean, you know, buy, buy Black Series helmet. Yeah, it's complete, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, 100, 129 bucks, whatever. Um, and to buy a 3D printed uh, helmet for 90 bucks, it's worth it. Oh, cool, Corey. I've never seen any Knights of Ren helmet files, but to be honest with you, I've never looked for them. Hang on a minute. Let me look. Let me look. Because after I was so disappointed with the fact they didn't release all the Knights of Ren for the Black Series, I was just like, ooh, ooh. Somebody does have a uh, big girl grenade face. Ooh. Huh. But I'm, I'm sort of over that now. I still like the character. I'm just, eh, you know, meh. <laughs> this one helmet's actually just sick looking. But there's not a lot. There's not a lot uh, on there. God, we got 70 people in here. What? Wow. Thank you all. Um, so, yeah, because, you know, uh, I've actually uh, I've sort of hit, I've sort of hit a wall when it comes to my heavy Mando armor. I am struggling trying to get that armor sized right. You know, if I was six foot tall 118 pounds it'd probably be great <laughs> so i don't know i'm uh i'm struggling with it struggling but i'm not giving up i'm not giving up but in the meantime i've got the printer and i don't want the printer not working 
So while I'm trying to figure out the sizing and everything for the uh, heavy Mando armor, I might as well print something else that I think is cool too. Um, and you know, who knows? They might come up with some Wrecker armor. I don't know. But if I can't figure out, if I can't, if I can, and I'm, I'm reaching out to several people and we're talking. Uh, no, I've not done any of the leg armor yet because then, because my process is, you know, head down and I'm stuck on the chest, the upper ab and the mid ab. I'm stuck trying to get that chest piece because here's the problem. All right. If you take uh, like Mando armor, Stormtrooper armor, uh, Death Watch armor, they're more, um, I'm going to use this book here. They're more sloped like this it's more of a just a gradual bend the heavy mando armor has these hard angles and that's the part because when you put the chest on and it comes over and you got a hard angle here and then a hard angle coming back and that hard angle is where i'm struggling because it's like seriously hard angles which is makes sense but i mean imagine if you take you know this piece of paper and you take it and fold it and, and you're creating angles like this i mean it's just hard edges and if you this is the part where it's, it's hard right here is where Imagine this is up against the chest, and this is the side piece, and then there's another angle like this. So you've got something like that, right? And here's your chest, and then it comes over, and this is like your ribs, and then you, it's, it's, yeah. I'm not giving up. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't see Chris. I can't do that though because if I can't get the chest right, then the rest of it is useless. Like the legs, because all of it is specific. And if I move on, and and if, let's say for instance I went ahead and printed, and I got the thighs, and I got the calves, and boom, 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 the knees, I got all that printed, but then I still cannot get this right here. Oh, man, it's already killing me just to see what I've got printed on my mannequin. Well, the six scale part, I've got the six scale hot toy, the heavy Mando hot toy. I've got that. I've took it. It's it's not. I can print it. The problem is that weird angle. That's that's the problem I'm having. Is to, so if I get it wide enough, and then it, if I get the chest wide enough, then these angles are way too wide, so they come way out. So then you got to tweak these, and that's where that uh, modeling program I've got that I'm still learning the ins and outs on it is I can actually manipulate the STL file. And then as I'm manipulating it, then i got to print it, and then if for some strange reason I got the manipulation of what universal key with a super chat, what's up with that brother? Thank you. Um, it's, let me, let me, let me show you something. I'm going to, I'm going to put this right here for now. So you guys see when I post stuff on Instagram and things like that, you see the pieces I've made. This is all the failures and the supports and things. I mean, look, I mean, this is literally full of mistakes and other things where I've tried to do things. So if you're thinking about getting into 3D printing, be very familiar with this kind of box. Just say it. Now, I'm not throwing none of this away because to be honest with you, I can make some really cool stuff out of it. I mean, 
you can actually uh, make some good dio pieces like this piece here. So I don't throw nothing away yet, but you know, like this piece right here, you can make a really cool wall. Um, get old Deadpool here. So you can make a, a really nice uh, Dio piece with, uh, with some of this stuff. So I'm not throwing it away. Oh yeah, it's definitely, Phelan is definitely learning. But yeah, that's my mistake box. Um, here's a piece that I printed. So I printed this and I was so excited when I printed this, right? Because you guys know what this is, right? Just, I mean, you know what this is. Come on. Somebody's got to know what this is. But I was so excited when I printed this. All right, Graham. I mean, detail looks good. Now, this isn't what I printed it for, but I'm going to use this as an example. Because this, this definitely won't fit. But this was holsters for the blasters, right? I mean, and they're wicked cool. I mean, I mean, wicked cool right there. Boom. Hold, got the leg strap. Got the strap here. Yeah. I didn't, because I've got a set of these pistols that are 3D printed. However, I didn't account for something. So this was a wasted print. <laughs> so it's in the box. But at some point, I might be able to figure out something to do with it. I don't know because I can't reuse it, you know. I might be able to figure out something for another, another holster, but, yeah, I was so excited. And, and the big problem is, is like this, this riser right here, there's no riser inside. I literally didn't account for that. But I only printed one because I wasn't for sure. I thought I'd had it right, but I didn't print them both at the same time. But I actually made a left and a right. But I only printed the right. So, yeah, mistakes. Have the mistake box. TV remote holster. It will work. It will work. Flashlight. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. <laughs> so here's the crazy thing when I was thinking about this, because this isn't the first time I've put Deadpool in here. I was actually thinking of a, uh, because it's got these wings on it, I could actually mount it, something like this, like on, uh, I don't know, a log or something. It'd be like a, uh, a crow's nest or get a piece of uh, cardboard tubing or something. So, yeah, there's, there's always a use for it. But Deadpool fits in it good. But, yeah, so I save all these. I save all the scraps. I save everything. Um, just for that simple fact that these, these pieces, again, you can use them. Like I said, that would make a great, uh, wall, a wall piece. Um, this, this piece right here, uh, it actually has a little bit of function to it or bendability to it. So, you know, you could use them. Yeah. There's always, always a use uh, this support section right here. So, yeah. 
Save the pieces. Because you never know what you can do with them. Uh, let's catch up here. I do get excited about stuff. Shot down in flames. Good with seeing you too, brother. You know what? Hang on. Let's look here. I'm going to, let's see here. Uh, just scrolling through, looking through the, the chatty McChat chats. But it is, I mean, it, it is fun. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy this. I actually have a, um, a web webcam that actually is pointed at my printer so I can actually watch it during the day. Um, but yeah, I am getting really, really excited about some of the, um, the, the print projects and things that I'm involved with. Bat cycle, no, no, because I'll tell you why. Because I started noticing some, some stuff uh, with my scraps, and then I also found some other uh, pieces that I may be able to print off and add to it. Um, but yeah, when everything happened a few weeks ago, it was, uh, you know, a lot of projects just sort of, you know, sort of went to the wayside. Um, just like the Tuesday night live stream and a lot of stuff. And I'm slowly getting, I'm slowly getting back into the routines, routines. It's all about the routines. Oh, shit. But yeah, we can talk about anything. We're going to go for, I don't know, maybe about another 20 minutes. I'm probably going to stop about 7.30. Um, second shot went great. No issues. Arm was a little sore. Other than that, no issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About uh, reaching out to you. Yeah. Remind, you may need to reach out to me. I've got like 80 meetings tomorrow. But just to, as a reminder. Yeah, I saw that. Make my own batter rings. Good. Um but no, I mean, a lot of people have, you know, they've messaged me and they've talked about, they've talked about, you know, I've talked to a lot of people about 3D printing because, you know, I'm the first one to admit I'm new to this. Um, but I'm also one of those people that when I get into something, I mean, you guys saw it when I was doing when I, the EVA foam stuff, my resin castings. I mean, whatever I do, I just jump into it. Both feet, arms, head first. Uh, favorite YouTuber? <laughs> Me. I'm just kidding. Uh, favorite YouTuber? Adam Savage. He is by far my number one favorite YouTuber. Um, and that's because he's a maker. And I've been watching him for as long as I can remember. Uh, so, yeah. he's my He is my favorite. Like, I will never miss one of his videos. No. Uh, but anyway, um, so what I've been trying to tell people is, and, and you guys know me. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to keep nothing from you. And that's why I tell people when they ask me about 3D printing, oh, I'm going to get a 3D printer and I'm going to, man, you make such cool stuff. But you never see the mistake box <laughs> you you really don't you guys have i've done some live streams where i've been saying and stuff like that i mean it's a process and it is and i've watched a lot of 3d printer people on youtube and i'm like man that is so easy yeah but it's time consuming that's the piece of the puzzle i mean think about it there's a week just into this right and I've got probably if I if I worked on it every day, like starting tomorrow, if I worked on it every day, say a couple hours a day, maybe by Sunday, I may be ready to start painting. Maybe. 
And that's just because, you know, you want to try to make it, you put all the effort into it. You want to try to make it as nice as you possibly can. And that don't even include pads or anything on the inside. You know, so, which I got some, I was actually talking to Kim um, a little while ago. And uh, she's going to get her sewing machine out. And I asked her, I said, you know, can you, I know how to use a sewing machine, but I've never used hers. And so I told her, I said, hey, I need you to show me some tricks on your sewing machine. And she's like, oh, I'll sew it. I said, okay. So we talked about some padding. So I actually have a pretty neat ideal uh, for a pad system for the helmet. And I, I actually took one of my old motorcycle helmets and I took all the liners out of it. And I'm looking at that. But if my ideal works for this helmet, it'd be great. But it basically would be one singular pad that would do the entire helmet. And it would be, instead of doing like the pad kits that I use, um, I don't have one up here. I've got some more ordered. But they're for um, like airsoft helmets. There's like 10 or so pads and you, like there's a big center pad and you put pads around it and you bring it down. And those are great. They're cheap. You can get them from Amazon for like 10 bucks, 11 bucks for a whole set. But if I could do this one pad system, it's basically one pad, throw it in there, you're done. If that would work, that would save so much time. And since it's not multiple pieces, it would all be one piece, then the sewing of it would just be one thing. So Sean doing good, 60 to 65%. You know, um, the thing about it is, it's like anything, uh, honestly. Mama said, Pop, yeah, how you doing? Um, it all depends on how much time you want to put into it. I did watch Mortal Kombat. It was gory. <laughs> Um, but it, it is, it's like anything you, you have to learn. You have to, um, one of the, one of the things that I did to my 3d printer, I've said, I've already upgraded my 3d printer and I took the factory plate off and put a glass plate on. And that was the best decision that I ever made and ever found out about was taking the aluminum plate off and putting a glass plate on it. Things stick so much better on the glass, so much better. Um, but yeah, it's like anything. If you want to do it, you just got to realize that there's work, you know, anything worth doing is worth doing right. And if it was easy, everybody be doing it. And if you, if you literally can't invest, you know, hours of learning and accepting that you're going to fail, then you definitely don't need to do this. Uh, no, I do not collect Mezco. I, I had one Mezco figure. I like them. They're cool. All right, come on. You got some questions, ask them to me. I'll answer them. As, and as we get going back in the, 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 the role and the scheme of things, then uh, we'll sort of get back to the normal type toy table thing and... Uh, Somebody mentioned this earlier, so well, there's Bane. Oh, I do have, I, I do got something, and it's actually, there's my Bane. Look. I got some really good tips and help with uh, this figure. So everybody that reached out and told me how to actually attach the legs on this thing, thank you for that. I need to, uh, I need to photograph him, but there's Bane. Bane. Afternoon, Rick. Um, so if you guys remember um, way back and when I, the last night Batman, remember the arm at the bicep just bicep bicep was just broke off. Um, oh yeah, I love that Dr. Fauci figure. I love that thing. Um, so when I first reached out to McFarland, they, they told me that, you know, that particular figure, 
sorry, but you know, they didn't have any in stock. Then later on, I got the Red Sun figure and it broke. Well, they sent me a replacement for that. And the uh, yesterday, I got an email from McFarland and said, hey, we got some more of those figures in. We're sending you a replacement out. I'm like, way to go, McFarland Toys customer service. I mean, this is like a month ago or more. That's probably a couple of months ago when that figure broke. And when they told me they didn't have any, you know, in stock, okay, cool. I mean, it's I'm I'm okay with it. You know, you re replied back to my email. You you showed me that, you know, you do care about your customers and at least it was a person, you know. Uh, but now they're uh, they're sending me a replacement for my last night figure. So, yeah, speed stick, yeah. So that's uh, tomorrow. It'll be here tomorrow, the twelfth. So, way to go, McParlin. Oh, dude, Scott, man. I think honestly, toys in the next three to five years are going to blow us away. They're already better than they were when I started collecting, you know, and yeah, it's only going to get better. I mean, it's, it would not surprise me at some point in the next three to five years that six inch figures will be just as, well, let me rephrase that. They can, I don't think they can be just as detailed, but they will be amazingly detailed, almost like a hot toy figure, as far as the looks, the head sculpts and stuff. I, I firmly believe that because they're already better. If you think about it, go back three years and look at what they, I mean, people, we've got figures that are, you know, three, four years old or more. Just take a look at those. So yeah, I believe they will be. Oh man, fresh. Yeah, I still got I still got I'll find me a fresh one day. When I least expect it. Yeah, Jeanette, that's exactly what it should be. And and again, I'd already wrote it off. I didn't think nothing about it. An 18 inch Cygore one day? Ooh, 18 inches. I do love the Cygore. Yeah, I still haven't op opened any of the subway servers because I won't open it till I, till I find me a fresh. I'll find fresh. You know, the crazy thing about it is before they went on clearance and way back, you know, months ago, even in the last year and year before, I mean, you can find them things all over the place. Actually, now that I'm getting that replacement one, I'm actually going to take the one because I wound up just gluing the, the bicep in place uh, so there's no bicep swivel. I'm actually going to take that one and do a little bit of a repaint on it. Uh, Universe Key, you're absolutely right. They are some amazing uh, head sculpts out there. But yeah, I can I can see in, in the next five years a whole next level because... There's a lot of good custom. Here's the crazy thing. If companies, and I know the reason why they don't, but here's the big difference. When you take hot toys and things like that, you have people that are sculptors and they're, you know, really putting in the time. Uh, Mesco's the same way. You got people that have talents and not saying the Hasbro and them don't have that, but it's just a different level because of the price point. Now, here's a problem we may, we may run into as these figures get better the price point i could see going up so let's say a night what we're paying for a, a figure now that's 19 bucks that figure may be 25 at walmart might be 30 so we got to be careful if we if we want higher quality it's going to cost more money you know so it's a balancing thing you know, checks and balances. Actually, Buzzman, I have that on, if it's the same one I'm thinking of, I actually pre-ordered that from uh, Target. <laughs> Good one, Charlie. 
yeah, I saw the 10 inch stuff, uh, on social media day dropping. So on the, uh, the carnage. Ooh, a Joker version. Ooh, interesting. I do, uh, I do have a repaint that I'm going to do actually, uh, have a figure, uh, that I'm actually going to do a repaint on. I may actually, cause it's not a very complicated repaint. I may actually do a video on me actually customizing that one. It's actually pretty simple. It's not a like crazy in depth one. Yeah, I mean, I think so. The Halo figures, I have yet to pick one up yet. I've heard, I've heard a lot of people uh, talk about those, talk about the joints, talk about you know the legs and the arms and things like that. But I will tell you this though, the Halo figures are a lot like troopers. If you want something to repaint and customize, those are actually pretty cool to do. Uh, just for that simple fact. Hang on a moment. Okay. Sorry, I had a... What? Okay. Sorry, I had a... Work thing. Squirrel. Uh, Mary, you're absolutely right. You get what you pay for. You definitely get what you pay for. But I will say, um, you know, there's just a ton, ton of good-looking figures out there. To me, uh, Dragon, that that's a good point. I wish we could at least get, I mean, hang on. I'm going to take something as simple as this. Uh, you know, we've got the G.I. Joe figures. You got, you know, the Hiss. You got the Fang. Why somebody doesn't make, I mean, McFarland's got the Bat Cycle. You know, they got the Bat Raptor. I mean, why Hasbro, they made the Snow Speeder. I mean, why we can't get... Um, one vehicle, just one, and it could be something as simple as a Jeep or a rail buggy like this that would fit uh, six-inch figures baffles me. Uh, Janet Patrol with a super chat, what's up? Um, it, it blows my mind because they would be bought. <laughs> and the crazy thing about it is like uh, with the Halo figures, the Warthog, okay, three and three quarter, blah, blah, blah. That thing in my area is shelf warming like crazy. Now, my particular area, I think there's more six inch collectors than there are three and three quarter inch collectors. Now, statistically, I don't know what the actual percentages are, but if I had to guess based on what I see, six inch figures leave the shelves a whole lot quicker than three and three quarter figures do. Just saying. But if you took the G.I. Joes, and I'm just going to use them for an example, and you made one vehicle, and it don't matter which side you make it for. I mean, we got the, the motorcycle of our Baroness. We've had the Punishers had a motorcycle. Captain America had a motorcycle. Just make a vehicle. Um, people would buy it. Heartbeat. I know uh, uh, me and Kent was actually talking, um, and there's... And I'm going to tell you this, it's, it's, this is no secret, but go into the toy section and look at the cars, look at the remote control cars, the cheap ones and things like that. There's some really good cars out there that you could convert to six inch figures. Now you're going to repaint them because they're like blues and reds and some of them might be green and pinks and blah, blah, blah. But they are some things out there that we could take and convert over. But I would just like to see Hasbro make one. Just something. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Just, just give me one. Uh, oh, my God. Jetta, you're 100% right. Oh, my Lord. It'd be crazy time. 
people would definitely be losing their lunch money. Yeah. Groove. Yep. The cost, I mean, okay. Let's let's talk about that for a minute. All right. You take the we'll take the hiss tank, okay? Uh, see, Jeanette, um, the hiss tank is uh, what is it? Twenty nine bucks at Walmart. Is that what it's running? I, I, I think it is twenty nine ninety nine, something like that. Twenty four ninety nine. All right. Double it in size, make it six inches, right? Or for a six inch figure, double the price. 49 bucks, 59 bucks. People pay 50, 60, 70, 100 bucks all day long for Lego sets. People will pay $100, $200 for a six inch figure on eBay. People would pay, if you made, if you made this vehicle right here that would fit a six inch GI Joe, people would buy it. And I guarantee you, it would not sit on the shelf like the three and three quarter Hiss uh, tank does in my area. I would bet you on that. Yeah. 140 bucks. Charlie? Brother, if, if it's yours, yeah. Six scale throne, yeah. I mean... It all boils down, like, when I look at my 12-inch G.I. Joe stuff, like, I've got the Jeep and the trailer. I've got uh, a motorcycle for my 12-inch G.I. Joe. Go to a Joe convention and look at the 12-inch the Joe vehicles. I mean, people buy those all day long. Why? Because they're cool, and you can put them with your figures. Just say it. Oh, yeah, the... the can, can you imagine the flag if, if it actually was for six inch figures? Because the flag's what, like eight feet long? <laughs> yeah, Chris. Yep. Exactly. There's there's things out there we can do. Here, the problem is you you've got to go in and, and like I said, you gotta do repaints and things like that. Uh Fortnite had the quad. Uh, vehicle, which uh, is a really good vehicle, but it, you know, it's yellow. So, you know, no, I did not pick up the uh, China pop. Zodiac, what's up? How we got 83 people in here. Wow. Wow. Thank you all. Maybe we need to start a, maybe we need to start a, um, a, a Twitter campaign or a, some kind of campaign and hashtag Hasbro makes six inch vehicles or vehicles for six inch figures. I think that would that would help. Groove, I enjoy watching them as well. They are relaxing. I had somebody com made a comment. Uh, it might have been on yesterday's video. I don't think it was on today's video uh, about does anybody else get jealous when they see toys and other people's videos that they don't see in their stores? I can honestly say I don't get jealous, but I'm like, oh man, <laughs> I don't ever get jealous, but I do, I do get excited when I see other people's um, hunt videos and I see things and I'm like, oh, that'd be cool to see. Oh, yeah. Six inch walker. Oh, yeah. I will tell you this. I think, is it tomorrow? No, wait a minute. I think it's this week when the uh, G.I. Joe blood figure drops. Yeah, I'll definitely miss that one because I'll be working. So I think it's during the, it's either on a Thursday or Friday. It might be this week. It might be this Friday. But yeah, a walker for uh, six inch. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I 
but it's but I mean again, it's one of those things to where yes, when I look at other people's videos and I see them pan over the shelves, I'm just like, oh man. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah that that blood figure. That'll be one of those that. Yeah, that that'll hit eBay in like an hour after it drops and be a couple of hundred bucks. Yeah, Charlie, the 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 Tie Fighter was it was massive, but you know what? That thing is cool looking, and it looks really cool out my backyard destroyed. But for the life of me, I don't understand why they made the TIE Fighter instead of an X-Wing Fighter and why they never made the X-Wing Fighter to go with the TIE Fighter. It's, it's already there. If you go to any of my videos, you'll see a link to Teespring. Pick up a shirt. No, I do not have the snow speeder because it does not snow in my area. And I refused to pay the money for it because I couldn't figure out what to do with it because it never, it never snows here. We get ice. 519. Okay. So I'm close. It's it's coming. We're, it's next week. Not going to go to Target on Fridays anymore. Oh, my God. A 12 scale at that. Holy crap. That thing would be... But man, would it look cool. If you think about it, and, and I get it, I mean, if we looked at all the vehicles that we'd like to see for 12 scale, oh my God. You'd, you'd almost have to have a whole separate room just for vehicles. Uh, Liam, I liked it. I thought it was funny. Uh, I really enjoyed, I was talking about it earlier, I really enjoyed the whole cooking scene. You know, that, that was, it's going to be an interesting Fake snow. Yeah, but see, here's the crazy thing. I mean, that thing's huge. You know? It's it's big. And, uh, yeah, that's a lot of fake snow. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I just sort of, I think we miss out on things like that. Unless you're a three and three quarter, Clay. If you're a three and three quarter, you can get vehicles for anything. I'm getting Joe fake. You know, I I made a comment, and I personally, I'm at the point now, which I have a lot of G.I. Joes, and I'm at the point right now to where, and I'll use the, the blood as an example. If, if I don't see it, I don't see it. If I ever find it, I'll grab it. But I'm not going to take off work. I'm not going to be scouring the internet. I'm not going to be going to eBay. I consciously, when it came to GI Joe's have made the decision that I'm not going to worry about finding it day one or day two. If I luck up on it, I luck up on it. If I don't, I don't. And I'm just going to move on. Uh, there's actually uh crap. Just law, uh, Jetta. If you're still in here, you might be able to post. Uh, J uh, oh crap, Jazz uh, Inc. They make a, a six scale cockpit, or they're producing one, or starting to. Or um, crap, I think it's Jazz Inc. J A Z Z I N C. I think that's what it is. I hate it when that happens. When I totally lose my brain. Let me look here. I think that's what it is. Yes. Hang on a minute. I'll find it and I'll put a link in it because they actually um, they do projects. Where's it at? The one six scale deluxe or DX Falcon cockpit diorama right here. I'm gonna put the link in the chat. There you go. So if you want a six scale Falcon cockpit diorama, there you go. And this, this thing is detailed. 
<laughs> it's really flipping detailed. But I'm going to tell you this. It ain't cheap. But it looks good. It looks real good. Uh, the work they do is amazing. So you get your money's worth. Oh, cool. Grand friends with the owner. Look at you. That's awesome, dude. Ah, just sent. Oh, let me look here. Let me look here. I think I'm sent you something. Ooh. Look at Graham. That's awesome, dude. I don't know if it's going to show up on the camera, but yeah, there's something Graham made right there. That is cool looking. Look at that. Graham's got some skills, got some talent. It's awesome. Uh, no, I don't. I don't really watch anime, to be honest with you. But well, I mean, think about the price tag. It's for six scale figures. I mean, so the size of it is huge. And again, the amount of. I mean. Think about like this, you know, you pay anywhere from say 200 to 500 bucks for a hot toy. So in the big scheme of things for the Millennium Falcon cockpit that you can put four hot toys in it, that, that's, that's pretty legit huge. I mean, so the price point on it compared to the figures that go in it, you know, especially if you, especially, if, let's say for instance, you've got, Han, Chewie, Luke, and uh, Leia. I mean, right there, you've got what that cockpit cost, if not more. So, and again, it's not like me. Number one, I don't have any of those four characters. So it'd be, if I if I actually got that diorama, I'd probably put a Stormtrooper in it just to freak people out. Uh, what is the la latest thing that you dig with merch? Math wins again. Uh, Liam, uh, honestly, hot toys are like anything, you know, Jetta says it all the time, uh, you know, collect what you like. My hot toys collection is very specific. You know, it's it's about stormtroopers and clone troopers and things with helmets. Uh, that's my that's my jam. So, you know, it honestly just figure a genre. You, I, my best advice for for anyone when it comes to hot toys is ask yourself this question first: Are you a completionist? Because <laughs> to me. That is a very important question because depending on if you answer that question, yes or no, can can greatly affect your wallet. <laughs> and I think anybody that collects hot toys could agree to that. Um, if, if Whether you be Marvel, DC, Star Wars, if you are a completionist, yeah. And I thank, I thank goodness every day that I am not because, whoa. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not getting the 40th Boba Fett. Yeah, the Batmobiles are awesome. What's up, Ryan? Do I hate... <laughs> There's days... Yeah. I think anybody that collects toys hates money because they don't keep it. Tiglu Sniffer. What's up? Yeah, so uh, I said... Um, yeah. Ooh, make it yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I guess, honestly, it really just depends if you have a favorite character, but let's say, for instance, Iron Man's your favorite character. There's a buttload of those. Let's say Spider-Man's your favorite. There's a buttload of those. Joker, there's a buttload of those. Batman. So, uh, you know, just, just find one you like. And, you know, make that one your first choice. It's really not complicated if you think about it. I think all of us could pretty much say there's at least one particular figure. Like, 
I'll use this for a good example. Uh, Echo, Bad Batch. I wish that had made a record being the first one. <laughs> but is it cool? Yes, it is. Will I get it? Probably because, but, but here's my problem when it comes to the Bad Batch, which I don't think this will be a problem when it comes to Hot Toys. I, I truly think this, this will happen. Uh, I think they're going to do them all. I do. But man, it would be so disappointing if the only one they did was Echo. Or did, you know, Echo and Hunter. If they don't do them all, <sighs> that'd be so disappointing. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, Hot Wheels, uh, I'm probably close to 50 or 60 Hot Wheels. Oh, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me back that up. Not counting these. If I count these, I'm over 100 Hot Wheels. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got a few, in, of, and this is all Captain Rex cars. Uh, but the only Hot Wheels that I collect are Star Wars Hot Wheels. He was Zodiac. He was. I'm just saying, it's like, this is, that is one set that I will definitely be a completionist on, is the Bad Bad set. Uh, nice. Congratulations on the engagement. That's awesome. Oh, David from Lost Boys. That's a that's a that's an unusual choice, but a cool one. That that's cool. Uh, oh, Chris, I'm the same way. I've got Pops and Hot Wheels, Lego, Hot Toys, quarter scale NECA. Yeah, I just I mean I, I see I see I just see awesomeness in all of it. I, I just do. Um, parts of me wish that I could be more singular, but then, like I said, I just see too much coolness in all of it. And that's the part that is a blessing and a curse at the same time. Army Bill, Peter B. Peg Warmers. I need to get a shirt made up. Have you seen a Peter B. Peg Warmer? <laughs> now it's Frog Man. Against driving. All right, guys. I think we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Um, again, um, thank you all for hanging out with me. We had uh, had a big turnout tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, super chats. Thank you for those. Uh, much appreciated. Didn't have to do that. Uh, much appreciated. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, I'm going to try to get back to the routines of doing this. Like I told everybody earlier, uh, Kim is really, really happy that I came up here tonight. So, uh, and I, you know, like Patsy Toy Hunter says, so she can watch her shows on TV. Um, keep following me on Instagram. And uh, for the folks that didn't see it yet, we'll do another fit on the old Wrecker helmet right there. The uh, keep following me on Instagram. I'll be posting pictures of the paint and and things like that. Um, if I can put the time to it, hopefully I will have all the uh, the seam filled in and the primer stuff put on in the next couple of days. Uh, I've got a face shield. I've got a face shield coming in. That's going to be a challenge for this particular helmet uh, because I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. There's a nose bridge right here that actually sticks out past the eyes and that's because it's recessed right here so that's going to make it a little bit of challenge to put a a, a uh, visor in it so i'm going to have to work out the details i started working on the patterns today at, at lunch and i think i've got it figured out but uh it's one thing to do it on paper but it's another thing to do it on a face shield so i don't know but I'm definitely going to be putting uh, a visor in it. I'm gonna figure. I'll figure it out. I may have to heat. I may have to do a heat gun. 
I don't know yet, but uh, yeah, keep keep following me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, all that. I mean, you know, only got like 120 people following me on Twitter, on the Twitterverse. Uh, but yeah, I'll be posting update photos on, on this bad boy uh, as it goes on. And I am considering uh, going ahead and printing out all four of the uh, the Bad Batch helmets. Now that I've successfully printed one, and I understand that process of cutting it and everything. So, uh, but anyway, guys, thank y'all for hanging out with me. Uh, appreciate it as always. Uh, hope y'all have a great rest of the evening, uh, great rest of the week. We'll be live again uh, Saturday. I think we'll be live again Saturday. I may be getting the garden ready. I ain't quite worked that out. It depends on the weather. But anyway, guys, appreciate y'all. And always remember, toys refreshes your soul. And I'll see you next time. Good night, everybody.